Am I wrong for reporting my nephew to the police after he stole and damaged my car? I'm 22 male, and I'm the product of an affair. My dad is about 25 years older than my mom, so all three of my siblings from him are 17 plus years older than me. I didn't have a relationship with that side of the family for majority of my childhood, but my dad and grandparents often sent money, holiday cards, birthday gifts, etc. I'm a lot closer to them now and had good relationships with all of my siblings, nieces and nephews until this happened. I own a 1976 Corvette Stingray that was gifted to me by my maternal grandpa when I turned 17. I've built this car up from a roller and it's my most prized possession. I went out of town for two weeks for work and left my car in my paternal grandparents' garage. I don't like keeping it at my place when I'm away for long because I don't live in the best area. I've done this since my freshman year of college and there has never been any issue until now. When I got back in town, I immediately went to my grandparents' house to pick up my car and there was a big dent and a lot of paint missing off the side of my car. It looked like someone side swiped it. I asked them what happened and they were confused. When I showed them, they were as shocked as I was. They told me that my nephew Kevin 25 male had been messing around in the garage the previous weekend, but they didn't see him take the car at all. We checked their camera system and sure enough, he had taken my car. I tried to call Kevin but my number was blocked, so I called my brother and told him what Kevin did to my car. He said he'll ask him about it and recommended a body shop for the estimate and repair. When I got the estimate back, there was $3,700 in damages. I told my brother the estimate and he said that the estimate was ridiculous and that the damages weren't that bad. I told him either he or Kevin had to pay for it to get fixed or I'd be contacting the police. I gave him three days and he didn't pay me so I filed a police report and gave them the videos of him taking my car. Kevin was arrested at work and my brother was pissed. He called me going off about how I ruined Kevin's life over a car and said some threats. My sisters and dad have been calling and texting me asking me to just put the family first and drop the charges, but I don't want to. Am I wrong? Now for the top comments. Nope, he stole your car. You offered the option that did not include involving the police, which was him taking responsibility for the damage he did. Ultimately, they all made their own choices. The fact that they didn't believe what the consequence was doesn't mean anything. Not the idiot, and if you were to file any sort of claim at all, you'd have to file a police report. To those asking you to put this aside, say, take up a collection, put some skin in the game, get it covered, and I will. But I am not accepting damages to my car to do this kid who cared so little for me and my property that he was willing to steal and inflict the damages. You want to be mad, be mad at the kid. I am not paying for this and I am not accepting the damages. I didn't want to go the insurance route because they'll raise the rates, but it's looking like I'll have to. My insurance is already pretty expensive since I'm under 26 and on my own plan with two cars. Oh, I totally agree. Path of least resistance is simply for them to pay the bill. But absent that, file the claim. However, it is highly likely that the insurance will subrogate against Kevin, as in sue him for damages they paid. And it will be a lot more than the actual damages because they are going to cover all of their administrative costs, plus legal fees and court costs. So, 3700 might look more like 15 or 20k. So, I'd advise them one last time that it's not going away. Now, I can't speak for the problems that this might cause you and family, but you should at least think about it. Ironic how your nephew is three years your senior, but lives up to every bit of the stereotypical nephew, being irresponsible, privileged, and alienated from reality. Family or not, a man three years older than you, stole and damaged expensive property from you, returned it without fixing it, and expects there to be no consequences. Not wrong. Seems like they're using family as a convenient excuse, when real family would never act that way. Next story. Am I wrong for not letting my husband move us into a tiny house? My 29 female, husband 31, has been getting into tiny homes for the last few years. Watching videos and shows about them, reading about them, helping his friends move into them, the works. I thought it was just a general interest, but it seems like it's gotten to be more. I own our house outright. I bought it a few years ago before meeting husband with a combination of savings and the inheritance I got when my grandmother passed. My husband is not on the title. This is important because a week ago, my husband came home with a realtor's info. He was going on about getting rid of all our stuff, selling the house, buying a tiny house and some land, everything. He said the realtor would be there for an assessment the next day. I immediately stopped him and made it clear this was not happening. He did not have my permission to sell the house, he was not getting rid of my things, though he can do whatever he wants with his, and I am not living in a tiny house. 
I'm sure some people love it like his friends do, but his friends' wives and children are all miserable. They have no privacy, had to get rid of a lot of sentimental items. The kids are always fighting because they're on top of each other. I refuse to do that. And I told him I refused. He got super angry and said he was making the best decision for the family and that I would get used to it. I reminded him that I owned the house, not him, and he could live in a tiny house if he wanted to. I would be comfortable here. More arguing, and he left to go stay with one of his friends. Some friends agree I'm in the right. That tiny home living isn't for everyone, and I would be miserable living like that since I enjoy my space, privacy, and sprawling. Others have said that he can't live his dream without my help, and I'm selfish for not at least giving it a try before shutting it down. Am I in the wrong? He left the house to go stay with his friends. Where? Do tiny houses have guest rooms? Lo, not the idiot. Maybe suggest that he gets the tiny house and some property for it, and you use it for weekend getaways or something where he can sample the lifestyle by putting a garden shed in the backyard and living there full time. That should settle his hash. I mean, that's a far better idea than, well, just try it for a while to see if you like it. Like OP's friends are suggesting. If she doesn't like it, then what? Does she go back to her house that she no longer has, with all her belongings that she also no longer has? Yeah, and tiny houses have no resale value. Not wrong. It is very freaking weird that he arranged everything including setting up an appointment for a realtor to come by the next day, without so much as a discussion. Something is seriously wrong here. But he's making the best decision for the family, and she should get used to it. Sounds like he is getting into or starting a cult. Not wrong. Am I the only one that thought he's got secret debt and is hoping the house sale would benefit him? I would not want to live in a tiny house, I like my space. Agreed. I think OP needs to discuss his finances with him and find out his motivation for the tiny house. Next story. Am I wrong for refusing to invite my twin sister to my wedding? So, I'm going to try keep a really long story concise as best as I can. I female 28 and my twin sister Vicky were born to a teen mom who raised us the best she could, but lead us both to having very different ways of dealing with abandonment and an unstable home life. My mom has a very strained relationship with Vicky since when she was 17, she started doing many different substances, partying alcohol and smoking. I being her sister always tried my best supporting her, as my mother did, but I was more a best friend whereas my mom was the one to force her to sort her life out, rehab etc. I on the other hand turned out to be very obsessed with having control and structure in my life, which has made it very difficult for me to maintain romantic relationships as I can be controlling and paranoid with abandonment. Cut forward to when I went to uni, Vicky found herself in a very bad toxic relationship and practically cut off my mother, which severed their relationship entirely. She eventually got pregnant and gave birth to my nephew in my second year at uni. After struggling with romantic partners all my life and having very short-term boyfriends, I met my ex-fiancé, let's call him Dave, who I genuinely thought I'd met the one. During this time, Vicky had broken up with her toxic ex and was now a single mother, so me and Dave would have her and my nephew over most weekends. I however fell pregnant, and a year after my daughter was born, Dave proposed. I had never been happier for starting my family. We decided to wait a year to get married and genuinely enjoyed our new family life. However, one weekend I decided to go see my mother and spend the day with her and my daughter, but we came home early since my mother became busy. When I arrived home, I saw Vicky's car outside which wasn't unusual, and went inside. Nothing would have prepared me for what I would find. Vicky and Dave were alone together in my bedroom on my bed, and it seemed like the deed had already been done. I went straight to packing for me and my daughter and left. I gave Dave no chance for excuses and cut both of them out of my life entirely, except for allowing Dave visitation to our daughter. Jump forward three years, I have barely spoken to Vicky except for when she pops back up into my life to apologize or explain, but I don't care. There is no excuse she could give me. I am now engaged to my beautiful fiancé Matt, and he loves my daughter and me more than I could ever imagine. Although my mother is now begging me to invite my sister to my wedding coming up in June, saying to put the past in the past, since my mother has been able to forgive her and mend their relationship, I refuse which has caused tension. She's telling me this may be the only way to fix our bond, and for my daughter to have her aunt and cousin back. But I still refuse, so am I wrong? Now for the top comments. Majorly not in the wrong. Your sister made her bed, slept in it with your man and had no remorse. If anything, your life would be better without her in it. Your sister made her bed. It was actually OP's bed, and it doesn't sound like sis made it, quite the opposite probably. Lol so true. 
Mom needs to understand that now is not the time to start insisting OP invite a strange sis. It's her wedding and she doesn't need to deal with all of this nonsense. If mom wants to raise this after the wedding and honeymoon are over, then that might be more acceptable, but she shouldn't get her hopes up about any reconciliation ever. Not wrong at all. And, not everything can be fixed. Your sister did the ultimate betrayal. You would not invite an ex-friend who did that to you, to your wedding. Just because you share DNA with your sister doesn't change that. Your mother has a fantasy that all her kids will get along and will go back to the way it is. Your mother will never stop bothering you on that issue. I don't blame you. I would not invite her either if I were you. There is no excuse for what happened. Once again, not everything can be fixed. Instead of worrying about this, have a great time planning your wedding and getting married. Thank you for this. I've been feeling guilt due to it always being my mother and sister most of our lives and now that's all changed. I don't want her in my life and have relatively moved past the whole situation, but it's my mother I don't want to upset. I'm more than a little appalled that your mother chose this to be the act that mended her fences with your sister. All the choices your sister has made that hurt your mother incidentally, and the one your mother chooses to stop holding grudges over is the targeted betrayal against you. That's freaking low. Last story. Would I be the idiot if I opt out of Thanksgiving with my parents because my brother and new wife, who left me out of their wedding, will be there? My brother and I are 8 years apart, I'm older. Since he was about 12, I have lived in another state. We aren't close, but we hang out a few times a year, and it's easy and fun. I recently moved to the same city as him and my parents. I envisioned us getting closer, but it never really happened. He's the king of I'll call you tomorrow with zero follow-up. It hurts my feelings, but I've accepted it and take what I can get. He got married this past September. I was told that there was no wedding party because his wife's family is too big for her to make a choice, and she didn't want to leave people out. I was given instructions to get a grey suit and that I'd be given a blue tie for pictures. The day of the wedding, I was hanging out in the men's dressing room, and I saw that my brother has a gold tie, and that his best friend has a gold tie, and that his old bandmate has a gold tie. Odd, but I didn't think too much of it. The ceremony started and I was sitting in the audience. Lo and behold, the music starts and there's a procession. My brother's two gold tie friends walk in and line up on stage left, and his wife's sister and her husband walk in and line up on stage right. The non-existent wedding party. At this point I have an almost out-of-body experience. The ceremony was a blur. After the ceremony, we took pictures, which means I took one picture with my brother and that was it. I spent the cocktail hour in a stall in the bathroom, embarrassed and hurt. I made it through dinner okay, and instead of cake, my brother had made a ton of his specialty cookies for dessert. I'm allergic to the recipe as is, but with a simple tweak I can have them. He didn't make any for me, or even warn me this was happening so I could bring my own dessert. Anyways, I left the second dancing started, and a week later sent the newlyweds a letter saying basically, I thought things would improve once I moved here, but this wedding has shown me that we don't have a relationship outside holidays at mom and dad's house, so let's just keep it real and I will see you there, being disappointed all the time isn't healthy for either of us. The problem is that Thanksgiving is upon us, and not only will they be at my parents' house, but they are bringing a couple of friends with them, so I will be really outnumbered and uncomfortable. Would it be wrong of me if I opt out for this one year, stating it's too fresh of a wound for me and I'll see y'all at Christmas? No, you don't need to go. But your brother did nothing wrong. You do not need to put siblings in the wedding party just because. He had the desserts he wanted for his wedding. Your allergies are bad for you, but don't affect wedding desserts. But your brother did nothing wrong. He flat out lied to OP about there not being a wedding party. His brother didn't have to put him in it, obviously. But, to outright lie and say that they weren't having one, rather than saying we aren't close enough for you to be in the party, is a total D-move. Especially, since he knew his brother was going to be at the wedding, and see that he intentionally lied. Of course OP felt humiliated, his brother didn't even have the decency to tell the truth. I feel like there's something missing here. We recently planned our wedding and we never had to tell our siblings that they weren't in the wedding party. If we didn't invite them to be a part of it, then their assumption was that they weren't in the party. I feel like a good reason for a bride or groom to explicitly tell someone that they aren't in the wedding party, or if there is no wedding party is because that person is asking about being part of the wedding party. If OP asked his brother about it and couldn't take no for an answer, then I can see why the bride or groom would tell him there is no wedding party. Why would the OP feel humiliated? It's not like the bride or groom announced to everyone that there is no wedding party, and that's why the OP is not in it, and then when there was a wedding party, everyone was like haha OP, you're not in the wedding party. Everyone sucks here. Brother shouldn't have lied about there not being a wedding party. 
OP needs to stop trying to force a relationship with brother that they don't have. Brother didn't want you in the wedding party because you're not close. He didn't make you your own special cookies at his wedding because his wedding doesn't revolve around making sure you have a dessert. The letter to the newlyweds was pettiness overkill, but hopefully you mean it and you finally accept that you can't force a close relationship just because you want it. That makes sense, me trying to force it. I guess it's hard to take that your brother doesn't actually care. The letter was more about the last two years of him repeatedly and blatantly blowing me off. It wasn't mean, it was just acknowledging that we have no friendship, and the wedding made it evident to me, and let's not pretend to be friends, because getting blown off all the time is taking a toll on me emotionally. Not for nothing, my entire family feels him pulling away, and acting frankly like someone we don't recognize. He used to be sweet and considerate, now he's angry and selfish all the time. It's bad enough that we've had serious conversations about him maybe having a brain tumor. The personality flip over the last five years has been overt and concerning. Dude, he's just not that into you. 